What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Guns, Nerds, and Steel. Today I present to you Alpha 20 in 10 minutes. A complete preview of everything revealed so far for Alpha 20, 7 Days to Die. Alpha 20 promises to be the most content-rich, immersive, transformative update for the game so far. So sit back and relax and let's explore all of the interesting changes and improvements that will be coming soon. And let me know in the comments what you're looking forward to the most. Check the timestamps below if you wish to skip ahead, but otherwise, let's begin. We'll start by reviewing the new weapons and weapon textures. Alpha 20 will see the introduction of pipe weapons. Craftable on day one, pipe weapons will utilize regular ammo types so that you can dip into the firearms perks and reap the benefits in the early game. All pipe weapons will be available in quality 1 through 6, and will proceed tier 1 firearms like the double barrel shotgun, pistol, and hunting rifle. Reload animations will be slow, but otherwise these should provide players with at least a semi-reliable means of defense early on. Especially if you happen to get the pipe SMG and a handful of 9mm ammo. In addition, the marksman rifle has been replaced by a new lever-action rifle, which creates a bit of separation between that and the sniper rifle introduced in Alpha 19. Many other weapons have received a facelift in terms of models and animations. Weapon mods have also been overhauled in appearance. Mods will have a different appearance depending on which weapons you put them on, giving each weapon a unique look. The chainsaw and the auger have a completely new look, and a new melee weapon has been added, the Pipe Baton. The long-awaited drone will finally make its debut in Alpha 20. It will be a member of the robotics family, alongside the robotic sledge and the robotic turret. However, it will not occupy one of your concurrent robot slots, so you can use it alongside the others without restriction. They will not have any offensive capabilities yet, but they will be able to function as a mule, healer, flashlight, and morale booster, depending on which mods you put into it. The fun pimps have continued with their efforts to upgrade all character and zombie models to HD. They sprinkled a few into Alpha 19, but all of them will be ready for Alpha 20. The traders have been redone as well, but we haven't seen a new trader gen yet, and it appears the trader compounds have had a bit of TLC as well. A new shader system will be introduced, which will have its most profound effect on the burnt and radiated zombies, giving them a vibrant inner glow. The spider zombie has been outright replaced, but the old spider will be present as a general population zombie with no special ability. There is a new zombie, and we don't quite know the name of him yet. He's expected to have a special ability for Alpha 21, some kind of special attack where he detaches a blob of something from his head and throws it at you. Many characters will be getting Jiggle Tech, something first introduced fittingly with the stripper zombie in Alpha 19. The lab zombie will have a jiggling hand, the cop will have a jiggling belly, and the soldier will have some jiggling guts, among others. Some zombies will have interesting animations, the spider will have a predator-style mouth, and the screamer, well, <laughs> see for yourself. They will also be introducing the new Gibbs system. This will allow for better dismemberment of zombies. Loose body parts and blood will now litter the battlefield, and this is planned to be implemented for more and more zombies with each point release during Alpha 20. One of the biggest focuses for Alpha 20 is the new random world generation system. Completely overhauled from its Alpha 19 version, Random Gen will create the most immersive environments ever seen in 7 Days to Die. You'll have more customizability options, faster generation times, and a preview window before you jump into the world for yourself. The game will use stamp tech to place down artist rendered instead of computer generated scenery, and a new tile system will allow for infinite variability within cities. How it works is that there will be themed tiles like rural, residential, commercial, industrial, downtown, just to name a few. Each will have buckets or empty locations in which a random POI will be selected, which is appropriate for that tile. Tiles will be adjoined in such a way that the city becomes increasingly dense as you move toward the center. A trader will be located at the entrance to the city and will only give you quests within that city, and within these tiles and within POIs are what are called parts. 
parts are like mini POIs. This could be anything from a food truck to a construction site or a car accident, and it will give even more flavor and variety to the landscape. Shapes and the building menu have been completely redone as well. Players will now have access to nearly all of the shapes in the game, over 1200 of them, and they will be available in all building materials. Reinforced concrete and the drying phase of concrete have both been eliminated. The progression of materials will go wood, strong wood, cobble, concrete, then steel. You will be able to build from whichever material you choose from directly from the build menu. The snap animation is now much smoother looking, and you'll receive a warning if the block you're about to place will cause a collapse. Over 150 new POIs have been added for Alpha 20, and each week that passes before release promises that even more will be included. New POIs will be utilizing the new block shapes and new items that have been added to the game and many of them will be added for quests as well. In addition to new POIs, many older POIs have been retrofitted to fit alongside these new POIs without breaking the immersion. All POIs have been standardized into a specific footprint size so that they fit nicely into buckets and therefore into the new city tiles. Several new items have been developed and several others have been replaced with new and improved models. Many of these will be available for crafting as well to help with your decorating. Not all items will be functional, at least not yet, but they should add an extra layer of realism and immersion, as well as new items to break down for component parts. Weather has been slightly tweaked so that it changes more frequently. Storms will be a bit more transient in nature instead of lasting all day long. Wind will now affect the trees and the grass, and the effect will vary based on the severity of the storm. The ground texture, grass, and trees have all been updated to give a much more realistic and natural feel in the wilderness. New dynamic music will be added particularly for Horde Knight in order to provide a more dramatic atmosphere during pitched battles. A new tinting system was developed so that players can tint their vehicles. All standard dye colors will be available, and vehicles will be white by default. This system will also apply to bedrolls and various items throughout the game to give a sense of variability in the world. A new restore power quest has been introduced. You'll be tasked with clearing out a POI at night and activating a large generator to restore power and functionality to the lights and other electrical items within the building. The indication is that there will be some sort of climactic event as you try to repair the generator, much like there is a climactic battle after retrieving a buried supply chest. There will also be a new Tier 3 Buried Supplies quest. All quests issued by a trader will be within the same city, so your travel time should now be reasonable. Finally, there will be a special reward when completing the first 10 quests from a trader, and my prediction is that it will be a bicycle. Last but not least, you will finally be able to put mods onto your vehicles in Alpha 20. There will be five. The Fuel Saver to boost gas mileage, the off-road lights to boost visibility at night, the extra gas tank to increase the amount of fuel you can carry, the extra seat mod which can provide up to two new seats for the 4x4 and one additional seat for the minibike and motorcycle, but there will be no effect on the gyrocopter or the bicycle, and finally the supercharger to give you about a 10% speed boost. And that is pretty much it, my friends. Let me know what you're looking forward to the most and what you hope will be included for Alpha 21. We're not sure yet when it'll be released, but we know it'll be made available to streamers and content creators on a Saturday before being released to the public on a Monday. I'll be one of those streamers bringing you fresh looks at Alpha 20 the weekend before release, so if you want to see that, don't forget to subscribe. While you're waiting for the next video, check out the links below for more content, ways to support the channel, and ways to become a nerd of steel. You can catch me on the Discord, Twitter, at the weekly livestream, or in the comment section below. Huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters who help grow and shape this channel. My name is Temreki, and I hope that I've earned your subscription today. I'll see you next time.